Hello to everyone for, for joining, joining our Inverse Problems seminar today. So you are very happy to have uh, Vladimir Druskin from Oshuster talking about uh, reduced order modeling, uh, reduced order modeling inversion from Calderon problem to SAR imaging. So that should be a very interesting journey. So, so thanks a lot for Vladimir for, for giving a talk in our seminar. Knut and Kati, thank you so much. I'm very honored to present here, actually, because I'm attending this seminar. I'm very happy with this opportunity. All right, so let me start. So there is basically, I'll try, to, well, it's kind of difficult because I try to put quite a long time, like research to come to compile and link them together because it's actually the many things are connected and I'm very thankful to my uh, long time collaborators and contributors is Liliana Borcia, Fernanda Guevara Vasquez, David Ingerman, Leonid Nizhderman, Alex Mamonov, Shari Mosko, Andy Tyler, Michael Zaslavsky and Jon Zimmerling. And this work supported by FOSR and NSL. Okay, so how I came to really like just to that. Long time ago, back uh, when I work uh, back in Russia, in, in actually I work in uh, oil exploration and I was, sure, I was told that we have to look at general UD uniqueness uh, formulation. And in fact, in fact, they did not know it's Calderon formulation, formulation, but it was quite well known. So we just, uh, I did uh, some work on proof for piecewise uh, constant and piecewise analytic uh, coefficients. And, uh, and then was number of work in the 80s, I think people were looking for the same perspective, right? Con Vagelius, Sylvester, and also Con Vagelius, also piecewise, Analytic, Sylvester, Newman, Global, and Nachman, uh, also like 2D problem. And when I actually, the way it, I did proof, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of layer stripping. You do con 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 consecutive uh, Cauchy problem with respect to uh, uh, green function, all variables, like it's like, if it's 3D, it's six dimensional, it's 2D, it's four dimensional. And, and then you consecutively find boundaries of, of uh, domain and it looked like layer stripping, it looked like layer stripping. And um, I was interested and I tried to do it and it never worked actually. So, and then I found, okay, well, there are many people try to do it, say I see it, like just work of, Margaret Isaacson and Somersal, for example. And main difficulties is, uh, is to achieve convergence in continuum setting. It's actually, it's to extend to multiple dimension and regularization because it's all based on, on, on Cauchy problem, basically. So, and that's the hard part. Cauchy problem like for, for uh, elliptic equations. And um, it did not actually, uh, work until we start to look at reduced order uh, problem, reduced order mo uh, modeling approach. So what it does, it transforms uh, approximately, but a very good level of approximation uh, uh, data to hyperparameters of equivalent system and embed them to continuous setting. And then you obtain algebra like structure, discrete structure that where you can uh, use apply layer stripping using very um, a kind of de well-developed procedure starting from classical, such classical thing like Euclidean polynomial division algorithm. And the simplest example is with the classical, is classical work of, of Kair is like, um, is, uh, is electrical uh, synthesis, synthesis of filters. So you, you fit your filter by LC ladder network and uh, the way he found uh, use rational approximation and he found parameter using uh, exactly Euclidean algorithm. And in fact, this LC, it will, could be viewed as approximation of monostatic uh, radar, uh, like for example, 
like like electromagnetic problem for like so okay so we'll start with nitro, uh, with uh, with calderon problem because it was where we originally started and we start with uh, 1d problem on interval from zero to l and with variable uh, so on the right end you have Dirichlet condition left end you have neumann condition and you have a uh, coefficient sigma regular enough and uh, uh, so this equation can be obtained after Fourier transform of uh, of uh, Kirchhoff equation variable sigma um, so it's Fourier transform along invariant direction for example in layered medium so uh, you can uh, present this data as transfer function if if um, L is uh, finite, actually, it could be also unfinite, but for simplicity, we consider finite interval. So then this transfer function is, uh, spectrum is, is, is discrete and transfer function can be represented as this uh, expansion. And inverse spectral problem is from this transfer function, uh, find sigma. This is a very well, well, resolve problem. It's uh, uniqueness of ability in algorithms. It was done by Martin Kagel from Libertown and Crane. I use them like abbrevi this abbreviation MJLK in 1950s. So, okay. So, but we apply a reduce order model for that. Uh, so, as reduce order model, we just I, I take initial. Uh, is a part of of this of this expansion we just so of this expansion we just take initial part this is worse possibly possible reduce order model it has slow conversions but it's easy to analyze so we have like uh, just first part of uh, first part of the of the infinite series like finite series and keys for all this approach is um, stages continued fraction so, uh, so it's famous Stilges theorem that uh, any partial fraction with positive residues and on coinciding poles, uh, uh, negative uh, poles can be uh, uh, can be equivalently presented as Stilges continued fraction. And um, you see, there's like multiple layers and with positive parameters gamma and gamma hat. Uh, and it can be done via direct uh, order of k algorithm. And, and here I show such, uh, there are many algorithms like that, like that can do this. It could be done with uh, like uh, rewritten like uh, Euclidean polynomial division algorithm, like uh, Lanzas algorithm and uh, uh, Jacobi inverse Givalu problem, discrete uh, Gelfand uh, uh, marching uh, approach and finding difference layer stripping. Actually, I wrote it in fact as Lanzas, first order Lanzas algorithm because it is numerically more stable. They're all, all algebraically equivalent, but you should choose the most stable algorithm. So you first, uh, your, your data are poles and, 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 uh, and the residues, you transform them to like, you have K of which you transform them to 2K to first order system. And then you run this recursion. And as you see, this recursion also is proof of uh, this Stilges theorem because all these coefficients is just inverse sums of squares of real numbers. So these coefficients are positive. If if it can uh, if uh, until it stops, all coefficients are positive. So and this you see it runs is like layer, it's also layer stripping because it runs from one to k from first to to, to the last consecutively. So, okay. So, so beauty of this, that actually it was noticed in, in, uh, by people in, in, in uh, electrical like synthesis, basically in filter design that 
you can run, you can rewrite this. Uh, you can re you can in realize this transfer function uh, uh, as uh, Neumann to Dirichlet map of a funny different scheme. This scheme and uh, uh, and uh, so basically its value it's like it looks like it looks like approximation of this original problem because it has no Dirichlet condition at right end and and Neumann condition at left end and it's just you take value at at, at, at zero so um and beauty of this is this gamma is exactly this gamma which we find here or it's or confusion continued fraction right and then, because it looks like finite difference scheme, you can uh, have finite difference interpretation that give us this gamma and hot gamma, like, like if you just look carefully, just compare to, with uh, continuous problem, it can be like some grid steps divided by uh, by sigma, discrete sigma, and, and like, prim like primary and dual coefficient, and and this is like product of grid steps dual grid steps divided by dual discrete sigma and um, and uh, uh, funny difference we call it funny difference uh, gaussian rules uh, or so all optimal grids are given um, by uh, these steps which can be computed for sigma equal to zero so uh, so it gives you inversion algorithm so first you do offline training step you solve discrete inverse problem with simulated data for known sigma typically it's one and find grid steps just because it, they, they become just equal to this gammas right then you solve discrete inverse problem with measured data basically gamma uh, and that, that you do by this uh, by this algorithm very simple and and then you obtain um, uh, continue and then you obtain continuous um, uh, and then you uh, put uh, put all together and then you obtain uh, that approximation to, uh, to continuous coefficient in the grid cells you just uh, run them in the nodes so 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 okay, that's very simple, very simple. And um, uh, so, and there is sort of uh, this uh, convergence result which we got like with Lilian and and Leonid uh, in two thousand five. We assume that uh, uh, that tra train, uh, training a measured data. Are computed by matching first term, first k terms of partial fraction expansion, uh, and let's say optimal grid are, are computed for sigma equal to one. Then, uh, for any reasonably good, well, not not pathological conductivity, with well, it's restriction are here, but then actually can be relaxed. It should be positive, basically. Uh, Discrete co coefficient converts to true sigma at, at nodes if and only if uh, grid is asymptotically close to the optimal as k in, uh, tends to infinity. So I need correct me. I should define this what is asymptotically close, but I, I put it loose. We have like in our paper we have precise formulation. Okay, so now is inversion result. So first. Okay, we did this on the left, but instead of this uh, training set, we just took equidistant grid. And what we get, we get uh, some inversion. There is a solid line is is uh, is um, is true uh, coefficient, and 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 scattered line is is a continuum, and uh, and. Uh, uh, Basically, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't converge. 
And if you take this uh, optimal grid, you have pretty good conversions, basically. Okay, so it's nice. All right. Okay, now let's go to two-dimensional generalization. Uh, so, so here we use uh, work, but done like uh, Moro, Ingerman, and actually Diverdier, Diverdier, uh, and uh, uh, and Curtis uh, on planar graph. So you have to take, uh, well, they work circular graph. You have to use a circular graph, which are uh, like with, with edges resistors. This graph should be consistent. So basically consistency means then uh, that dimension of independent elements of Dirichlet to Neumann map should be equal to number of, of edges, of internal edges, and it should be solvable. So it's basically something like uh, N, Number of boundary nodes should be equal to uh, number in number of internal layers should be equal to n divided by four. So n should be divisible, so, something like that. And on n minus one divided n plus one divided by four, something like that. So so this um, pretty simple consistent consistency and their layer stripping algorithm. In fact, the generalization of Stilges algorithm is very clever generalization. So, uh, so and it also shown by Ingerman and Moro that uh, uh, that uh, if you if you choose if you take true continuum data obtained from Kirchhoff equation as your data and solve it on the graph, so it's not inverse crime problem. So you get positive uh, positive re resistors. So it's consistent. All right. So, uh, so here is some um, some results uh, which we did time time ago. We purchased uh, uh, phantom model. So we did uh, this in, uh, with this with five percent noise. So we did inversion. So it's the same the same approach. You have trainable grid. First, you train it for homogeneous medium, and then you do you do this inversion with similar formula, which as for one B, you, you had a bit a bit noise, but then you do Gauss Newton, and you do Gauss Newton, you just you view your day, data is transformed resistors. You do it from from the resistors. It's like non-linear non preprocess. So it's much better conditioned data. And then you do one iteration and you get pretty pretty good answer. One Gauss Newton iteration. So, so okay, it's very high contrast, by the way. Contrast hundred. So any linearized method would be like screwed up, basically. So okay. And this approach, if you want partial data, you can do conformal mapping of this grid and on the left here. Or it can do it sometimes quasi-conformal mapping, or you can uh, or you can transform graph by uh, y delta transform to from circular graph to, graph to pyramidal, and you have your measurements over here. So there are a number of options. So there is a big flexibility actually in 2D. You can do a lot of things, but there is a very hard consistency condition. Uh, so if you have uh, like problem in RD, the the DTN dimension is just square of surface, right? So it would be dimension to D minus two. And uh, it's consistent with the internal dimension of problem only for two dimensional problems uh, uh, without constraints on the unknown coefficient. You put, can put constraints, you can make it like in layered problem I, I just showed before. So, okay. And we try to get around and we could not. So we just gave up basically. Okay. Now let's go to, now what we realize that we still can work on time domain problem. Time domain problems are easy in fact. So, um, so like, like example, which can be possibly easier to explain is, is uh, 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 
synthetic aperture radar imaging. So we have like it's possibly everybody know here there are experts like uh, here experts here. So so basically it's like plane uh, like flying and the data collected uh, on from source and receiver and typically source and receiver are the same the same. So so and then that data along uh, 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 several flight paths are, co are collected and come and combined for imaging. And standard uh, standard uh, approach is linear processing of uh, revert or uh, like born or reverse time migration, and uh, so and it, and of course it works uh, well until you have multi scattering artifacts, and in this case you can have significant scattering uh, multi scattering effect like multiple. It doesn't happen often, but it happens. So, but it's happened and it's a problem. Okay. So, so what is nice about SARDA data? They, they dimensionally consistent because in every monostatic location, SAR, uh, SAR collects function of time. And uh, if you have, uh, like you have two data, two two D data set for one flight path. You can solve, for example, two D inverse problem in cross section. And if you have, ideally, if you have multiple flight paths and covering surface, then you get three D data sets. Possibly it never happens, but in principle, well, at least you can have some approximation to that. And uh, Born inversion can be reduced to classical integral geometry problems, and there are number of results of uniqueness for this problem so basically like it's like averaging finding uh, uh from finding medium from every from averaging averages on spheres so yeah so its problem is quite doable okay and um and well now we go going back to explain what we are doing to 1d problem so we take uh, 1d problem now it's with variable wave speed, it's uh, from interval to zero to one for simplicity, and I assume regular enough wave speed. In fact, is just really need to be positive. And after transition to travel time coordinate, you can write it as in this form, with a being Schrodinger operator with Schrodinger potential that can be written through with this uh, dependence. Uh, so it's very well known transformation, and so we consider so-called. I use this model, uh, model uh, control theory terminology: single input, single output, or size of data. And it just you 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 basically use the same uh, source and and receiver distributions B. So it would be integral of. Uh, your, your measurements integral with the same B. And then we use linear, because I mostly work on linear algebra, on computational linear algebra, we use linear algebraic notation for this, basically. So, and we assume that B is smooth approximation of delta function. And inverse problem, again, is inverse problem finding from F finding Q is the same, is equivalent to inverse to the weird problem I discussed earlier. And, uh, since huge body of literature, for example, in particular this formulation, the time domain, there are discrete, uh, for example, inverse algorithm by Buben Burich, uh, quite old. But what we do here in new, we just unify marching again from Levitan and Crane approach and interoperatory projection Rome. It's not just finding difference because we relate it to projection, as you'll see, to internal snapshots of solution so um and that gives us uh gives us really uh new edge so uh we call we use this terminology so internal solution would be the solution in the interior and we have measurement at the at the, uh, at the boundary with so we don't know this internal solution uh, and we do and we um denote uh Background solution, it's solution 
when say for hom for, for homogeneous media, it can be also for non homogeneous media with non cohesion, but here for simplicity we use for uh, homogeneous media that means that for q equal to zero because if sigma is wave speed is constant then q equal to zero then multiplying this equation by this background solution integrating in space and space and time we obtain time domain finger integral equation so um so f0 is just background measurement for background solution. Okay, let us look at this more closely. So if we want to solve it uh, as like for uh, just to find internal solution, that is linear equation with non Q. But if we want to solve it as an inverse problem well, for non Q, it become a nonlinear because uh, here I just for simplicity uh, made all in blue, uh, all, all, uh, uh, like the all parts dependent on unknown coefficient Q, the all like blue. Uh, and you see that uh, also this internal solution obviously depend on Q. So that problem becomes nonlinear with respect to Q. And what, well, I started traditional approach. Traditional, one of the simplest approaches, you just view it U equal to U zero. It's become born approximation, and again, it's not accurate for when problem become nonlinear or large, large Q for multiple scattering. Or you can solve this iteratively, starting from born approximation, and then update U iteratively. Into, so it's sometimes it's called disturbed born approximation. It's computationally intensive, but uh, and for raiders it's just impossible. You cannot even solve one problem. Just so, yeah, so it's not, not an option. Uh, so uh, we approximate internal solution via framework of data-driven ROM approach. In fact, it's step further compared to this uh, reduced order model, which I described earlier based on Stilges, uh, on, based on Stilges theory. So, um, so if you look at the equation, right, it's our original equation. So uh, solution can be represented of this, of this of this problem can be represented as cosinus of operate of square root of operating times time. So basically, right. So basically, it can be written like that. And we choose discretization steps, and that which corresponds to something created of the signal, typically close to Nyquist. And consider discrete data. And let's denote this is so-called transitional uh, operator. And snapshots of internal solution can be written as just the value at, at, at these discrete times, the cosine, and then can be written as Chebyshev polynomial of P because of this simple uh, trigonometric uh, uh, identity, basically. It's classical definition of Chebyshev polynomial of first kind. So data uh, can be written in terms of Chebyshev moment problem. And I, again, I uh, just remind you that we don't know internal solution. We just, we just lie, we write, write representation for it, but we don't know it. Uh, so now we go, uh, uh, Let's go to Gramian. And basically, we consider Gramian of discrete dynamic. We don't really write it down, this discrete uh, dynamic system, actually reduced order model, which gives you these discrete, discrete snapshots. But we don't even have to write it down. But there is U, it will be a uh, 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 matrix of, of, of these snapshots. I use matrix, it's actually. Uh, columns are infinite, infinite dimensional vector. You know, sometimes we have difficulty discussing this with uh, uh, PD people because I am like linear algebraist. I just, I, I basically, I put everything in linear algebra setting. So if you would like this columns like infinite dimensional vectors columns, and then you have metrics of vector, of vector columns. Uh, uh, so uh, 
uh, it should be times, not, not comma, but times. So, and then we defined uh, uh, Gramian of this matrix is just like uh, inner product U by U. It's Gramian matrix of snapshot subspace. So, for IJ element of M, we obtain this it's using again this um, this identities uh, for uh, pretty trivial for Chebyshev polynomials. We what we get? We get very interesting thing that uh, this in a uh, this in a product they, like uh, can be expressed in terms of data can be expressed in terms of this is f is measurements we don't know we don't know internal solution but we can compute in our products and they are and in fact they sum of hanke and toplet matrices so it's matrix of certain structure which we still have not used yet in fact in, in full so we don't know snapshots but we can compute gramian from boundary data now next stage so U is full rank matrix. So it, I will show it like later, explain later why it is. And full rank matrix like can be uh, presented via QR decomposition. So um, V here uh, uh, unitary is actually, yeah, and L is uh, upper triangular. And then just simple algebra tells that M can be written as L times L, where L is uh, upper triangular matrix, and uh, and so L can be obtained. So L, this QR decomposition can be obtained by um, by uh, Haleski decomposition of M. And um, well, in fact, yeah, it's very the same thing. I think it was the ground of von Leviton theory, in fact. So, and in fact, this orthogonalization is uh, is very similar. It's in some cases it's just isomorphic to Stilges inversion algorithm, layer stripping algorithm I just described early in my in my first part of my talk. So okay, so let us may explain its meaning and what it does. So let's on the left we have. Uh, Snapshot. So here is like every column is is snapshot. I assume right from zero to one, like uh, snapshot. And and here is number of snapshot. It's basically time. So so there is depth. It's just like distance from source. So you see uh, waves goes and there are it's like true solution. There is some object and reflects and you see its reflections. So. So matrix is upper triangular. Well, it's approximately because it's not square. It cannot say it's it's triangular, but it looks like if you on this view, it's casual matrix. It's like roughly speaking, just in naked eye, it's like upper triangular matrix due to causality. But if you take true snapshot, if you take not true but background snapshots, wave going in homogeneous media, it just like goes like delta function basically. So they quite they totally different. They totally different. But okay, what orthogonalization does? An orthogonalization uh, make them look similar. Why it's so? Because say for example, you 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 have uh, well until. Really, until this point, there is nothing happens. But then you have this reflection, and you orthogonalized all previous waves. If you orthogonalized all previous, you remove reflected part, and so on. So that basically it gives you a complete consolidation of reflection. There is data driven, and there is also layer stripping because of causality. It, it's in, it's implicit layer stripping because we really don't. We, we really don't Im impose any like causality explicitly, but because it's casual, it happens, right? So then um, similar you can do with background um, uh, with zero. Uh, so all, so basically you have two approximate identities. Uh, so, uh, so orthogonalized snapshot for 
with v, v0 for uh, background and V for true, the approximate identity, <laughs> all approximate identity are approximately equal, right? So, so then you can write this, uh, this uh, approximate, uh, this approximation that gives you internal uh, solution as uh, uh, through background snapshots times this uh, trans uh, transformation of tri tri uh, triangular matrix of, of, um, of background and, and data-driven uh, Haleski factor. And this transformation is nonlinear because Haleski uh, transformation is, is uh, nonlinear. So M is linear. So M is linear respect to data because if we, if we see M to compute M, we just, it's, it's linear, right? But, but transformation is not linear, so it's nonlinear transform. And um, so I just show how it restores. Um, Mm, um, restores data that like we have like case but then have one scatter and wave is coming and it's, it's a little bit weird notation. I know why we use this. We call true solution is cheated solution. <laughs> it's or Orwellian notation, <laughs> right? Because we don't know it and to get it, we need to cheat. <laughs> but in fact, okay, in model examples, we know it. So, so, uh, so, okay, so, uh, First, before wave hit uh, this target, they all like uh, all everything is the same. But when it start to hit target, especially here, uh, so you see, uh, background solution is just uh, it does not see any target; it's just constant, right? But uh, our uh, reduce order model solution, a cheated solution, is actually true solution, are the same, undistinguishable. So, so it works. And uh, so then we call Lippmann Schwinger Lantzsch algorithm. Why, uh, why we call Lantzsch? Because originally we used his problem, which similar to my, which I presented in the first part, not radar, but like diff diffusion type of problems. And there we use Lantzsch for, uh, instead of Haleski, we use, which can be actually, can be replaced by Lantzsch, just, easy to explain with Haleski. We use Lanzas algorithm, so we just use this name. So, uh, so we compute this data, uh, uh, the data-driven uh, solution uh, in approximation to internal solution. And then we, because we have discrete data sets, we have snapshots, we approximate Lipman-Schwinger equation and then plug this in. And then because we pre-computed it already, so the be equation become linear. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so basically they reduced everything to, uh, to, to linear, uh, to, uh, to linear problems. So yeah, so there are some technicality. We have to discard half of data, but, uh, we, but it's, well, there are, there are issues, of course, it can be improved. Right. So, and there are, this approach has like multiple multi uh, dimensional generalizations. And in fact, uh, in fact, what is interesting, so it's like super uh, uh, dimensionality curves because you add to Dirichlet on if you have full MIMO, just to Dirichlet on MIMO plus time is super dimensionality curves. You add time, and here by adding time, you you simplify the problem. Like so, it's a reduced order model just obtained by tensor uh, tensor uh, tensorization of uh, of the color problem, and and. For this problem, we have like number of results, uh, and also Liliana, Liliana has with just separate results. So, uh, so uh, that like for many applications, for seismic, for acoustics, with uh, active arrays, and but a MIMO approach requires full input output matrix, and in SAR only diagonal of matrix of available. So what we do with 
partial data we do as, as good as we can is not as good maybe as like NEMA, but but so we what we do we couple monostatic lipman schwinger equation uh, with approximate approximate internal solution and just and get the solution so so there is synthetic aperture radar setup uh so we just for simplicity consider scalar approximation electromagnetic wave scattering and so it's wave problem with this like schrodinger potential just for simplicity with considered two or three d problems and and there is also slow time is of course approximation but we assume that uh, basically we have like uh, this uh, source and receiver moving uh, depends on time it's like for example plane it's function of time it's like with, with this uh, coordinate moving as, as function of time is large large time it's slow time that of course like approximation in some cases it's not true you have to like account for doppler effect and other stuff but here we what we do so so okay so then uh, uh okay so for proper MIMO setup, the data driven formula for eternal field remains valid. You can show it. But for monostatic setup, we don't have enough basic functions to cancel all reflections from different directions, uh, from wave coming from different directions. Uh, however, like um, if you take sphere non focused array for simplicity, for um, uh, in 3D, you can just everybody knows here, like you can represent wave as like spherical wave for regular enough scatters, right? Plus uh, casual, relatively be like like delta wave, like like relatively benign uh, uh, casual scattered field. Uh, uh, then what does if uh, ground smooth orthogonalization approximately cancels spherical averages? So spherical averages they they uh, depend weakly on 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 potential, and then we couple data we couple this equation for different t via lipman schmingler equation. Uh, so validity of this just show that. Uh, maybe it's not large scale and not large on screen but basically we show that 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 uh, more or less quali qualitatively this approach works so we, we have all scattering events uh, events uh, which uh, we actually we reproduce all scattering events in our internal field but it's not it's for qualitative inversion it's okay and these are examples of inversion so so um, there is example with three reflectors to the example and uh, we see like sources it's actually corresponding to near field sources are in transmitters are, so, so, so sar is monostatic positions are here and born give you this with multiple reflection and our approach give you this is not perfect but okay we like remove big part of this and what is interesting really you see backsides which not directly eliminated backsides of these catheters uh, why we see them because there are multiple reflections and they eliminated by multiple reflections and you see them because of that and but because in our approximation we account approximately account this multiple reflection we don't see from this size because there is no multiple reflections that are, that eliminate that so so and we suppress approximately suppress uh, 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 multiples and and of course there are some artifacts which we're working on like to rem on removing them but but so actually after this in fact give you like secret that it looks like neural network can can clean it because it's we minimized global interaction 
global type of error. So, but it's like preliminary result. But uh, but they cannot clean like born because born like they have multiple reflection with global interaction. So, and um, there is two in half D problem is like three, uh, like you have 3D wave and like fly path crossing uh, the two objects uh, orthogonally and it's pretty much similar thing. So we improve. It's not perfect, but we improve. And and uh, possibly cleaning now after that cleaning using neural network will help even more. But there are ways we have some ideas with Shari and Michael how to improve it further. So um, so basically that's that is my talk. Just can go to conclusion. So basically. Um, data driven ROM, they, pro uh, they provide embedding of this of data into like into in continuous framework and algebraic uh, there is also linear algebraic framework for inverse impedance and scattering problems and well we have promising result for calderon for 2d but fundamental difficulties for 3d which we don't know how to resolve and significant promise for transient problem here we show results for like a pre very preliminary for uh, for uh, synthetic aperture readers, but we have like quite a few MIMO results. And in fact, Liliana and Shari, they some of them present will present it on Liliana and Shari talks on the same topic, actually, similar topic earlier. And we don't show here some very interesting like, recent result imaging in lossy dispersive media and machine learning application in, in a way. Just of all this that the use of their models well in the way consistent with with uh, uh, Matty's talk I think a month ago or so okay thank you very much thanks a lot Vladimir for an excellent talk uh, it's very interesting so uh, the floor is open for questions so please uh, please unmute yourself and and ask questions if you have if you have questions for Vladimir. Hi, Bob. Nice to, nice to see you. Hi there. I enjoyed the talk very much. Thank you. So, Vladimir, I was wondering, uh, uh, for the, let's say, the LSL approach, um, if you have a little bit additive noise, how sensitive is it to additive noise? Well, depends what. If you take, like, uh, star approach is not very sensitive it's not very sensitive so of course uh if you take if you take uh uh like elliptic problems so they of course are sensitive so it's as sensitive as your original problems but we actually we have Gramian truncation procedures which can just improve on that so we just don't show it we have recent work number of works on that thanks vladimir I'm, I'm wondering if um would there be a way of combining what you're doing with SAR interferometry where they have actually two antennas you know normally what they do with interferometry is make an image from, from each antenna separately and then compare the images Oh, that's my next point. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm wondering if, if that would give you at least one other antenna. Maybe would, would that be enough to maybe remove more artifacts? Yeah, it would be like your, what your data is, is matrix two, two by two matrix. Yeah, of course it would be better. It just would be very easy to implement. Yeah, it's of course, of course it would be it would be big help. So they usually build in the assumption, which is pretty good in most cases that the surface is mostly coming the scattering is mostly coming from surfaces so yeah I, I wonder if there's something there that would would help that would be great this is very interesting work yeah thank you thank you uh Vladimir, may i have a question uh, sure. about about sar uh are there energy losses 
So is the so you you don't model that, but generally. You mean losses? Can we account for energy losses? Yeah, this for the for the. Okay, so we have worked with actually we have worked with Liliana and Jorn, and we have following up with Jorn Lippenschwinger. So it looks like, yeah, we we can do that. We can do that. With, so far we have one D, and actually there are quite interesting uh, results on that on comparing uh, Stilges functions with passive functions. So can be done and actually turned out to be very interesting theory. I just didn't did not show that. And and uh, SAR uh, really is dissipative, or no? Well, I would say Margaret maybe know better, but I think if in the air you don't have dissipation, if you have like, for example, vegetation, right, or ground penetrating radar dissipation, and so we can do it. Actually, we have examples which we, uh, we do it. Just like I didn't present. It's to be honest, it's way more complicated to explain. Way way more complicated. Because it goes beyond Stilges' theory. That's the main difficult. Still, Stilges' theory is bad enough, but it goes beyond. Any other questions for Vladimir? Floor is open. So Vladimir, I was wondering, so can you sort of use your uh, room up to sort of uh, talk about optimal probing, sort of how to choose uh, the measurements optimally? Um, you can, you can, um, but it's more or less standard, you know, think in control theory, basically, because, uh, uh, it's the same, basically because, um, when you design this multi-input, multi-output problem, you just can look at conditioning of Gramians which I just showed here. So, so you just like pick, pick best condition Gramians, for example, and then you improve your, your properties, right? So, so I don't think it's like speci really specific of what we are doing because I would say can all control-based approaches can do this, right? All control, but it can be done within our framework as well. So, so, uh, so Vladimir, can I, I'd like to ask a, a conceptual question that might be very naive. Um, uh, these inverse problems, they're surely really, in essence, nonlinear problems and of course you're not losing using least squares or anything like this but um, uh, you're using somehow methods from more or less linear algebra uh, but you know why do we not see in this analysis uh, issues like uh, local minima or uh, or somehow, multiple solutions or wrong solutions that we're accustomed to seeing in inverse problems that are nonlinear? Uh, good question. So main part is basically what we do, if you like, like <laughs> go to this, for example. Okay, you do this Haleski. There is no right. linear pre-processing because M is linear and L is non-linear. And this part takes all, not, almost all non-linearity. So basically it absorbs non-linearity. So sometimes like Alex and Ileana, they use also this po uh, post-process data for uh, 
uh, in the origin and actually other people build the group and they have much more uh, convex functional. So basically what you do, so it's linear algebra. Okay, Haleski is linear algebra, right? But it's on linear procedure. It does name linear algebra doesn't mean that algorithm is linear. So it's algorithm nonlinear, and this nonlinearity is taking all, all uh, well, not all, but most of nonlinearity, basically. So, so here is the main tree, right? So, so it's yeah. So this that's that's it, and. And um, lossy problem, dispersive, they even more nonlinear in this sense. So, but in the same line, you know, you put on linearity in linear algebra, but nonlinear procedures like Haleski or or this uh, Lantash algorithm, which is nonlinear respect to data, highly nonlinear. I would just sort of suggest that the, that if there's a similarity with layer stripping, I mean, layer stripping would be this direct nonlinear inversion scheme. Of course, the problem is it's terribly unstable. Right, so, exactly. If, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. It's, okay. So <laughs> there is layer stripping. Right. It just, it was put in the most stable way. You see, because like Lansash, okay, all linear algebra is based on Lansash, right? Right, so and Lantish exists like from nine from uh, uh, when Lantish invented in 1950s. It was considered a terribly unstable algorithm. People did not use it until page work in 1970s. So it's all based on that, you know. So so basically, you recast uh, these algorithms which are inherently unstable the most stable way. In so so that's. Um, yeah, and they absolutely right. They're nonlinear, but uh, but what reduce order model model just does it allows to use linear algebraic tool which are nonlinear and in stable way. Basically, that's it. You know, it's not it's not miracle. It's all all was known before. In fact, we just do proper setting. What what can view is proper discretization of Gelfand Levitan basically, and Crane. Just that's it. You know. Just proper setting, because it's very hard to do discretization. So there's a question from Jerry Kim. He says his audio is is limited. He says, can this approach deal with complex multiple scattering to include specular uh, specular reflections that have altered the features of the transmitted waveforms? Yes, but possibly you would need a MIMO for this. It could possibly cannot be done with SAR, or maybe. This what you say by by static setup will improve. Yeah, but MIMA will do it basically. Whatever if you you only need to well your wave need to resolve it if it's like below below uh, below resolution that can be difficult even though you well yeah but first requirement is have to resolve yeah. You have to resolve. Vlad, may I have a question about that consistency uh, uh, requirement? So, as I understand, that just stems from the uh, uh, from the finite difference approximation of the PD, right? So the, you use you use Stilch's, um, uh, uh, continuous fraction uh, to write the finite difference approximation, right? Right. Not only you see it's important, but but, but let, let, let 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 me finish. Let me finish. But if you use uh, if you use it with your optimal grid then this consistency requirement is satisfied automatically, automatically, right? Right, but in 2D problem. Uh, what's the difference? Okay, so issue is with 3D is following that Dirichlet on MMA physically, like I'm like geophysicist, I'm thinking physical term, 
you have source and source have two coordinates on surface, right? And receiver two coordinates. So for all possible combination, you have four dimensional set, right? And your uh, and your unknown is three dimension. So you have over the well, you cannot prove it's overdetermined, but like just from plain common sense, it's overdetermined. And then that means that graphs they repeat the same uh, like thing, you know. They basically uh, whatever you use, you have much more data than your internal degrees of freedom. So you cannot really uh, do automatic layer stripping algorithm in this model because you have more uh, less unknowns in data. It's kind of it's kind of funny that when you are time derivative time the time variable you can do it because you solve operator you solve tangential operator you solve intrinsically overdetermined problem and then you embed tangential operator but then you do uh, calderon type of problems uh, elliptic with without time you have to stick with all this well planar graph or their extensions they just cannot do it so possibly there is a way around with, with that. I don't know. It just like it just look, just could not do it. It's the same difficulty, I think. Possibly in Dbar, like I saw worked with 3D. I'm not sure how advanced they are. Like it possibly is a similar difficulty, but I think in Dbar they can somehow resolved. Possibly it could be resolved in graphs. But 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 here but here you use if you use just a, a continuous fraction a matrix matrix continuous fraction, then the dimension of those matrices is not the dimension of uh, Neumann to Dirichlet map. It's it it is uh, these are um, the grids. The these are the the dimension of the grid in the domain. No, it's especially actually if you one construct degree optimal, less. Especially for example, if you construct if, optimal grids. Yeah, for example, if you have okay, if you have uh, your data is Dirichlet on Neumann map plus time, right? Product of so you have like for example, take two D problem. In two D problem, you Dirichlet on Neumann map also two D, but adding time you have three D, right? So then you do continued fraction. In this case, it's solvable. So continued fraction coefficient is to uh, 2d so in fact in every layer you cannot view them like uh, like like sparse fully sparse it work they only sparse in orthogonal direction they can view them like kind of semi discrete like partly spectral partly discrete partly finding difference approximation so they one degree less but Unfortunately, in planar graphs, it's algorithm is not as simple. It can be read, cannot be written exactly in continued fraction. So you cannot, at least nobody mastered that, you know, like to do uh, something like that. Of, of, co of course, I don't see how it's possible. You have to have uh, in 3D, you have to have like maybe some partial data, remove some data just to have consistency. So I, I, that I don't know. That's that's open question. That we really spend a lot of time on that without results. Hi, Fernando. I'm stepping up as DGS. <laughs> Okay, well, um, if there are uh, no more questions from Vladimir, let's thank the speaker once again. It's a very, very nice talk. So nice, nice topic. And thanks, uh, thanks to everyone for uh, for coming.